Hello, I'm Josephine. I'm from Country and Coastal Interiors and today I'm starting my first video tips on interior ideas um, as promised. Not very good at this, I have to say, and I'm hoping the dog and the children aren't going to make a load of noise in the background, so fingers crossed. Um, but today I'm going to do a video about how to put together a colour scheme and how I do my starting point. So I've taken away the sofa from the sitting room and this is a great background colour um, just so you know all background items and anything that I show you I will post in a later date as to where you can get them from um, but this is a lovely dark colour which isn't too dark but it gives a great warmth and I've got this seagrass flooring which is a, always a lovely colour to start with now the way I start my colour schemes is I start with a client's painting or a piece of their favourite pottery or perhaps something in the curtains, um, something that's going to stay in the room or something they want to start their scheme with. So you pull out those colours and you start from there. I also like to add a mixture of textures, so be it velvet, a natural fabric such as a wicker or some battered velvet. Um, battered leather or perhaps some nice old wood, lovely natural fabrics. I always try and do as much as natural things as possible. So anyway, bear with me. As I say, I'm not very good at this, but I'll give it a go. My starting point today is this beautiful old chair, which I picked up. Again, I'll put links later on on the, on the TV. Um, but this has got a gorgeous, gorgeous patina. It is very damaged. And it's just something that sits in the back of the room in our garden room and I love it. It's got this beautiful texture, like a sort of corduroy texture and this gorgeous pattern of colour here which is all slightly worn and I love that this is all distressed and not all shiny. So I thought this could be our starting point for our scheme. So working with this I'd like to start by pulling through some of the colours from these chair, chair colours. So as a starting point, I'm going to put a table in here. I'm going to imagine there's a bookcase here because we don't actually have a bookcase on this wall, as you can see. But I want to create some height so I can show you a few accessories and how we build the colours. This is an ochre table, which I've actually painted. It wasn't this colour at all, but I just love this deep cherry red. And it just pulls out the strength of this. I don't want to do too much red in this scheme, but I want to just have a nod to it. So I think it's a really good base as a starting point. Now in this chair, we've got lots and lots of gorgeous colours. We've got the sort of rich chocolates, the mustardy colours, this beautiful olive green, these raspberry reds, and this parchmenty sort of hue. So I'm going to start by building up some colourways. And I've got some lovely old books which are from our garden room which pull these colours all through so it's a good way to start building your colour palette all these colours are within that chair I don't know if you can see it very well from there you can then add some texture I use these lovely again ochre lovely textured um, hanky boxes which you just pop over your hankies Again, I quite often use those in schemes for clients because it's a lovely texture. It's very natural and it goes on all sorts of things. It can go in really well in a country scheme or in a coastal scheme. It could equally look smart in a, a city setting. So we've got some colours going on there. Um, I've also got... I'm just showing you how you can build the colours. I've got this lovely plant pot, which actually is this lovely green that you've got in here. And it's got these nice textures and actually sits jolly well with it. So just to show you how you can start building up some colours. And I've got this lovely dog, which I've always loved. I picked this up in a second-hand vintage store in Ashburton. And I love it. So we'll pop him there for now. Um, <clears throat> I always go on about how I like natural textures and natural items. You know, even if it came down to just having a large load of fir cones or 
some lovely flowers. I can't get flowers at the moment. I haven't got much in my garden at the moment. And I can't get to the shops. But some natural flowers would look gorgeous. But, you know, texture, natural, lovely colours. You could do an arrangement of those. I'll pop it in there for now, just for safekeeping. Now, if you were going to put a clock on the wall, you could do something along the lines of this. This is a very deep chocolate battered old leather with a tarnished gold face on it. I mean, those colours would look fabulous in there if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to put it in the scheme for now because I think it, it's got nowhere but to go. And equally, if you were to put some picture frames up, I would go for ones which had a tarnished finish on that. I don't know if you can see. So that's very battered, old gilt. So sort of build up the colours and the textures with those. up this little side table from a charity shop this was 15 pounds I don't know if you can see that it's got a lovely wicker top to it nice texture lovely lovely shapes good shaped legs I normally wouldn't put it in front of a item like that but I'm just trying to build up ideas for you to show you you don't have to spend a fortune you just have to look for the right thing this was a lamp you can see it actually which was a basic wooden lamp and a very basic plain parchment um, linen shade. I painted the base and I antique waxed it to give it a softness. I put a little bit of ribbon around here, just with a glue gun. And I put a little bit of shell trim on here. And when this is lit up at night, this gives such a lovely glow. And this dancing is just gorgeous. So I'm gonna pop that there because it's a little bit of red. If you can see that. Now we need a little bit more red in the room. I do love the texture of velvet. It doesn't look right with this film, but it is actually a very good colour. But my camera seems to make everything a touch more blue. I don't know why. But this is a lovely Kate Foreman velvet, which I've had made into a cushion with one of her Kate Foreman lovely trims. So you can always incorporate a little bit of vintage velvet. I've also got these cushions from our garden room. You might recognise them from the sofa in there. Again, a lovely cotton velvet. I like cotton velvet. It's not shiny and it's got an embroidered spot. Unfortunately, this fabric's been discontinued since we had these made up, but I so love this. It's got that texture. Can you see these are little knotted details here are gorgeous but it's a lovely lovely sage green goes well with our chair and that would be a nice colour to go with it <clears throat> I think it's also important to work with all the senses candles I would never be without I like church candles which are simple I like the ivory ones as opposed to the white ones they're just much warmer and also working to the senses. I often have some form of diffuser, natural oils with a lovely scent. This one is one I saw in a client's house and I so loved it, I went bought one for myself. But they're gorgeous. So a bit of scent, a bit of light, a bit of texture. Fabric wise, if I were to put some fabrics together, more textures that I like are things like tweed. These are beautiful tweed. With a slight herringbone in them, I don't know if you can see. That's rather lovely. And these lovely greens. Oops, that one's disappeared. That's the wrong one. That one there. Which all work well with the scheme. That would get lovely cushions on a sofa or something. Or you could equally do those as lovely armchairs or something that goes along with the scheme. They've also got the lovely reds in here as well. It's a great book and some great simple plaids as well and if you're picking up on the detail of the corduroy in that chair it's quite nice to bring that texture through again I've picked out two greens that equally would work well this one is a more muted green but if you can see it's got a strie going through it so it's 
it echoes the corduroy but it's its own detail it's a cotton velvet again you can tell I rather love it and there's also a green that works jolly well with it a stronger color so you could go either way if you wanted a bit more pop it's rather a lovely green with that I'll put those to one side for a minute and if you know me well I always like to add a bit of foliage to a scheme because I think it always lifts the scheme This is an olive tree, again, from our garden room, which I love. I had a real olive tree in our garden room, but it didn't like it in there, and it rather died. So I've got this very lovely one, which you can shape and you can mould it. So it depends what corner you put it in as to how you want it to sit. But I do think a bit of green greenery in a room always adds to it. So it's a funny old scheme in that it's not really a scheme scheme. It's more showing you how to piece things together. You could put a beautiful rug down, another texture to pull through these colours. But it's all about layering up and I really enjoy layering up textures and natural textures as much as possible. So I think you can never go wrong with that, nature never gets it wrong. But I just think if you can start with something that you absolutely love, be it a beautiful cup, or as I said a painting, or a rug that you want to keep in the room, or such a piece of furniture or a lovely curtain, sit down and really study those colours. What is it about that that really works together? What is that palette? The palette's already there, it's made for you. Try and match up as close as you can and then start working back from there. I feel the cold dreadfully, so all my schemes have got a warm undertone to them. Um, I would prefer a blush pink to a sugar pink. I prefer a raspberry red to a scarlet red, which is more orange. Um, I just feel, you know, with these lovely olive and sage greens, you can go with some lovely colours which naturally you would think would be cold, but it just depends on which palette you've worked with, which end of the spectrum. Every green has a cold green and every green has a, a warm green and you just need to find those colours. So if you put a cold green with a warm pink, they don't necessarily work. You need to find something that talks to each other. They've got a, a natural connection. Not sure if I've explained very well, but I hope it helps. Start with something you love, build it up from there, and you'll find that things come together. And hopefully this has been helpful. I will have a look at your um, suggestions on Facebook and see what the next video will be. I do remember one was saying, how do you... How do you style a bookcase? One was, um, how do you make a small bedroom look bigger? I and mean, there's all sorts of amazing ideas there. So I will have a look at them and put something together for you. But anyway, enjoy playing and I hope this has helped and I'll see you soon. Thank you.